Oil ain't what it's cracked up to be. Because you have a field with 100 units of oil, you get down to 90, you get down to 63, you get down to 58, you get down to 20. Now what do you do? You put that in a car, don't you? Mm. Now what happens when you put it into a car? That oil in a car is moving two tons of metal and uh, 200 kilos. Let's, let's use metric tons. 5% of what you're moving is a human being because it's mm. one person in a car. Give the benefit of the doubt, there's two people in a car, okay? 10%. Yeah. Let's say there's two, two heavy guys, uh, each one of them weighing 100 kilos, riding around in a car. That's 10%. So you take this 20-odd percent here, the, the human part of the load is only 5% of the load. So 5% of 20% is 1%. But wait a minute. The internal combustion engine is only 10, 15% efficient. So you're actually, when you get a barrel of oil in the field, only moving a person is a fraction of 1%. Mm. It's not even 1% efficient. No. Okay, take the Tesla car. When I started uh, driving an electric car in 1980, the first question people asked me was, how far can it go? Well, the, the answer to that is depends upon how many tons of batteries I want to put in my car and drag around with me. No. I want an electric car that has a 10 mile range and I want to put it in a confined network such that I can recharge it whenever I need to go further. Because uh, I don't need to carry batteries around with me. Batteries are just like, what, what if the, the system has a, a temporary failure? I can go to the next station and get out and, uh, and charge it there. You see, the whole idea of replacing the things we do now with solar energy, we don't have to. We have figured out ways to do things with less. Mm. 